that this is a great point that um, that Richard Spencer could learn from a conversation with you is that um, uh, he, he seeds economics for culture. And I think a conversation with you or just him listening to you might make him realize um, that he does not have to seed the economics debate for the culture debate. Yeah. And, and you know, um, and even if we grant uh, some of the Lulberts the premise that, okay, maybe, maybe we could, we could gain material, pro even more material prosperity if in addition to free trade, we also cohabitated with other people of other cultures. Maybe we might be marginally more materially rich, but we know as Austrians that value is subjective and it could be the case, and it often is, that people will prefer living in their culturally homogenous and ethnically homogenous communities more than they would prefer a marginal increase in their material wealth, that they get more value overall having that homogeneity than they do from maybe having an extra DVD player or maybe a slightly nicer car. These things just aren't as important to them. And because of that, they profit more in a very real sense from having these homogenous societies. Um, and people like Spencer and other alt writers who are very suspicious of free trade, they have a very um, warped understanding of what free trade. When they think of free trade, they think of these abominations like NAFTA and the TPP and uh, all these other free trade agreements that the governments call them. But as we know, they're anything but genuine free trade agreements. There are free thousands trade of doesn't pages. take a thousand pages. Right, exactly. A thousand <laughs> pages long. They include so many regulations and prohibitions and, and, and uh, quotas and things. It's, it's not free trade. Free trade is like Hoppe said import whatever you want to import export you have your own export it takes one sentence it's so it's just unfortunate that they just have a very misunderstanding of what free genuine free trade actually is and that causes a lot of confusion with some of these alt writers so now what what would you say to um the sentiment that like so uh the the recent tariff on uh, aluminum and steel where um like i, I believe the cost of a car goes up for the for the steel tariff would you be against that on like economic principle or would you be for that on cultural principle well if we're putting it in a vacuum and holding everything else equal then of course i'm against the tariff but we don't live in that type of world if for instance trump was proposing this tariff and going to use that to supplant the revenue that he's gonna lose from decreasing income taxes, let's say. I'm not saying it's what he did, but let's say he said, okay, I'm gonna decrease income taxes, but then I'm gonna put this tariff on. Well, then I might be uh, supportive of that because on the net overall, I might see it as better for the economy and in, in closer to respecting property rights. Uh, and policies are always implemented in a world with a lot of variables. So I can say, that principally I'm against tariffs, yet realize that if they're giving us tariffs, but first doing something else, like decreasing income taxes or capital gains tax domestically, and just using tariffs to supplement some of the revenue they're losing by doing that, then yeah, I might be amenable. But if they're just raising tariffs, but not decreasing any other regulations anywhere else or taxes anywhere else, then no, of course I'm against that. So it's it's really a contingent question. It's case dependent. I, I think it gets at um, the best point that you made in your debate with Kokesh, which is just that most people uh, will are willing to to seed on economics for culture. Most people care more about culture uh, than they do about economics. Yeah, they absolutely do. They, they absolutely care more about culture, more about their kin and their people and their families than they do about economics or politics. That is absolutely 100% true. Um, only autistic people like myself enjoy talking about the nuances of political theory and economics, right? So the trick is, 
what the trick is then is to show them that okay i agree with and sympathize with your cultural values and i share them and uh but you need to realize that supporting these policies are going to undermine those very values that you cherish they're going to actually harm them as far as their prevalence in actual society so we have to show them how the politics relates to the upholding and protection of their of their culture or even the destruction and undermining of their culture and when we can put it in terms like that i think they're going to have a much keener ear than if we simply say well you simply should be free just because being free is an end in itself or you simply should be for free markets just because having more stuff is always better you know they're not going to care as much about arguments like that, which are the type of arguments that libertarians tend to unfortunately rely upon, that I relied upon for a long time. you got to put it in terms of their cultural values. And what that means is you're only going to be able to do those type of arguments with Western people, specifically white people, because everyone else's culture and background and heritage is really not conducive with libertarianism. It's actually very conducive with statism, right? And collectivism like genuine collectivism not the collectivist that Lobert's screaming about and that's why that's why it's politically correct and encouraged for all other races and all other people to embrace their own culture and heritage and to promote it and to even be homogenous in it that's why it's that's why that's encouraged and that's the only reason why we're the exception because our culture happens to go against the grain of the state goes against their objective of eventually uh, dominating us in every sector of our lives. You know, we're very, we're very uniquely, if there's one thing about Western culture that's unique, it's our individualism. Not in the hyper-individualist sense, like in the debate, but individualist in the sense of we support nuclear families, which is a very individualist type of family unit. Uh, we support private property. We think that you should be responsible for your own actions, that you shouldn't offset the cost the social or economic cost of your actions onto others that you're your own man you know all these things that that we welcome people voicing dissenting opinions you know because we want to figure out which ones are most sound and rational we don't simply just want to save face and respect someone's authority for authority's sake we want to see where the truth is right these are very uniquely western things that other cultures just do not share um, so what I'm hearing is that rationality and reason are white people concepts. Yeah, I mean, I, and not exclusively, because obviously no one could exist if they didn't appeal to rationalism to some degree. But rationalism was developed in the West, and we are willing to to implement reason and logic on a wider range to a larger degree of topics than any other culture is. Because other cultures are gonna use reason to a limited extent with a limited amount of topics to a limited degree. But as far as the scope of application and the degree of application, yeah, no one touches the West. And it's no coincidence that we're the ones who even developed the, the uh, rational laws and logical laws to begin with. It's no coincidence that we're the ones who developed libertarian thought to begin with, institutions of private property to begin with. Uh, this, it's no coincidence. There's a reason for these things. And the yeah, reason they're both biological and culture and they affect each other. Yeah, I was just getting at the fact that the, the concepts themselves are, are white. Yeah, they've been developed by white people and they're used the most to the largest degree by white people. Um, yeah, and I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence that they were conceptualized by white people. I think that they were conceptualized by white people because they are a value specific to white people. Right, of course. Yeah, 